I don't know if you guys know the story of Robin Hood. I, I think I had seen Robin Hood maybe when I was a child, the cartoon. And um, I, I don't think I ever really knew the story. Just like, oh, it's this guy that is good with a bow and arrow and robs from the rich and gives to the poor, right? Isn't that what the story was? Anyway, um, a friend of mine, uh, Christopher Weimer, and his wife, Daniela, Danielle, Daniela. I don't know if you say Daniela or Danielle, but it's, uh, we'll say Danielle Odell. Odell. Christopher Weimer and Danielle Odell. They co authored a book together called Free Loxley. I, uh, <clears throat> I picked this up on Amazon, Free Loxley. And, uh, I, uh, he told me he wrote this book and I was interested in reading it. So I got a copy of it. And yesterday I was sitting there and reading it. And th this, you know, it, it it's actually, this is such an amazing story so far. I'm, I'm on, you know, I, th where I'm going to read to you right now is on page 18. And I want to read paragraph two to you. But, um. I haven't finished the book yet. I'm I'm officially on page 23 of it. But it's a little book. There's not really much to read, you know, as far as a bunch of pages. It looks like there's about 78 pages to it. So, I like that. I like I like short stories, but this is powerful. This book's really got me so far. It's very interesting. I'm looking into the depth of this and the way they put this together is really amazing. Really, really good book. Anyway, so far anyway. So Robin, well, he's Robert. You know, they call him Robert, but it's who we know as Robin Hood. He is with this guy, Little John. Little John, if you ever heard of Little John. Um, he's not a giant, although when when Robert first meets him, it seems like Robert uh, interprets him to be a giant, but he's a little guy. And um, they get together with a group of people that are not into going to a building to uh, talk about Christ together. They meet up in like a forest and uh, and they have a little... They have a little community they built there. He says everyone takes care of each other. They love they love one another. They marry one another. Bury one another. Some call it family. Others call it tribe. So what they call it though is the ecclesia. Ecclesia. Remember ecclesia you might say or ecclesia. And elevating only one doctrine, and that one doctrine is Jesus Christ. So before it talks about how everyone takes care of each other, loves one another, marries one another, and buries one another. Some call it family. Other, others call it a tribe. Edwards call, Edwards one of the character in there. Edwards calls it the ecclesia, or ecclesia, however you want to pronounce it, elevating only one doctrine, Jesus Christ. So the sentence before all that I read says this, no descent though in the treehouse. No descent. You know what to descend is? It's the opposite of ascend. No descent though in the treehouse. Only rising bread. And when I read that sentence, only rising bread... I'm getting the metaphor. We are talking about the people. Not descending, but rising bread. Lifting one another up. Rising that bread up. Now, that that made me think about bread. And I'm going to go outside and ground myself now. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it. But anyway, here's the book for you. It's called Free Loxley. Written by... Christopher Weimer and Daniela or Danielle, Daniela, Danielle Odell.
Sorry if I butchered your name, Danielle, Daniela. <laughs> I don't know if you pronounce the e at the, e at the end. But anyhow, um, so yeah, you guys, get a copy of it on Amazon. And then um, we're going to go take a walk together and talk about bread. I hope the wind isn't too much for you guys. I've got my earphones in if that helps a little bit. But it's very breezy up here. Because this is just a really... There's like a wind tunnel. These are some cliffs over here. That, um, over these cliffs are the, is the ocean. And so there's this canyon right here. And, uh, and the breeze just comes through and blows wind. It feels like you're getting blown with air conditioning in your face. It's nice. So I ground myself. I walk barefoot in the grass. There's a bunch of grass areas all the way down that way more grass more grass more grass but it's really it's my little uh fortress like superman he had his fortress of solitude i'd say this is my fortress of solitude i like to come here ground myself but anyway um so yeah sorry if the wind's too loud you guys i hope this video comes out right though but I don't want to make it too long, but I, you know, there's so much we could talk about bread in the scriptures. You know, like, like when I was thinking about what he said about no descending, only rising bread, I was thinking about how um, there's this, this thing called um, leaven or yeast. People put yeast, it's a form of leaven. And what leaven does is it's something that causes bread to rise. So, you know, it's not flat, but it's puffy. It makes the, it puts a little poof into the bread. It makes it rise. And how the Israelites, when they were fleeing from Egypt, how um, they were told to make bread, but don't put leaven in it. Don't put yeast in it because... They, there's no time. We're not going to make this bread rise, right? We're just going to go without, without. So they ate what's called unleavened bread. Now, leaven is something that Jesus talks about, leaven. Um, he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, right? Or was it the scribes or was it the Sadducees? I kind of lump them all together. Beware of the leaven of your religious leaders, he would say today. Beware of the leaven of your religious leaders. Why would he say something like that? What's the leaven? Well, leaven, leaven, let's say putting, putting yeast in bread, it, it's something that causes it to rise, right? Speeds it up. And here's the thing. When you think of religious leaders in every form, even in your non-denominational stuff, right? Leaders... A lot of guys they, and, and gals, they, uh, they put this works mentality on you and they use Bible scriptures so that you will be pushed into hurrying up and getting your act together. Like, like rise up. Start rising up. Get yourself up there. Right? Ascend. So what do they do? They kind of put their their whole work to get elevated work to ascend right do all these religious duties and um and that is the leaven of religious leaders such as what we have today uh because they are trying to force a process on people because um maybe it looks like it makes the 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 church leader or the elder or whoever you want to talk about maybe it looks makes them look bad to have some slackers in their congregation right so we don't want a church of slackers we don't want a congregation of slackers we have a reputation to uphold so they start cracking the whip on the people and and getting them back into work 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 mentality right instead of keeping yourself low and humbled and let whoa. look at that i just dropped my phone 
<laughs> Keep yourself low and humble. What are the chances that my phone does kaplunk just like that on the ground? And what did I do? I picked it up. Well, that's what I was going to say is you keep yourself low and God will pick you up. He raises you up, right? Stay humbled and he will exalt you, scripture says. You stay humble, he'll exalt you. But you know, we kind of wanted to exalt ourselves because of our religious upbringings. And exalting ourselves means rising up, meaning get it done through your good works, your performance, your obedience, right? Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with works, performance, obedience, not at all. But, you know, it's not, we, that, that puts you into a mindset of doing something to get you to raise up, to elevate, right? To ascend, to, um, to grow even. But we get, we get, this scripture that recommends one thing if you're going to work work labor you right try hard to do something struggle make an effort and the encouragement is what kind of effort do you want to make the effort that you and I, I want to make is the effort to rest labor struggle make it a, an effort to rest to rest in what? To rest in Christ. And that you are going through a process. And if you just rest in him, which means to trust, to put your trust in him, well then you will be exalted. You will rise up. And it's not something that's supposed to be an instantaneous process. Now, he can, he can instantly convert you, if you will, transform you. I mean, we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds, which is a process, but he can, at the snap of a finger, completely change you. Like, let me, t so, so for instance, we're talking about bread, but let's just kind of talk about the wine that Jesus um, made from water. He turns water into wine. What he did is he changed the DNA of water, didn't he? He had to change the nature of water to make it become wine. Because there was, there was no time to get grapes fermented and let's get the process going of this. You know, no, Jesus, he took water, blessed it, and it became wine. He changed the very nature of the water into wine why did he do that with to turn it into wine because wine well water represents life but wine represents the life inside of the fruit for instance we have something in scripture called the tree of life the tree of life a tree is known by its fruit so it must be the fruit of life as well. If it's the tree of life, that means the fruit is the fruit of life, right? Because Jesus says a tree is known by its fruit. So we're talking about the fruit of life. Now, if you take this fruit, on the outside of the fruit, you have something called skin, the skin of the fruit, and you have the meat of the fruit, much like your body, right? Much like your body. So the skin, the meat that holds what? The life, the life, where's the life in you? Scripture says life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. So Yeshua, he takes bread, which is much like the skin of a fruit and the meat of the fruit, and he breaks it. And he says, take, eat. Now, when you take a piece of fruit, like a grape, for instance, and you bite into a grape, you're breaking through the skin of the grape. You're crushing it with your teeth. Now that's interesting because what scripture says is um, that by his stripes, you are healed. When you look up the works, word stripes, it's this pummeling, it's this crushing that his body went through. Much like what our teeth, due to grapes when you're chewing on them, you're crushing them. 
but so so his skin was crushed his body was crushed why so that the life would flow out or the blood would flow out or the wine now he took water which is life and he turned it into something else which also represents life but through the blood remember he came through water and blood scripture says and there's reasons that scripture has these little things these clues in there for us he came through the water and the blood can water can, can water just kind of eventually turn into wine not at all it has to be a miracle and that's his first recorded miracle in the Bible by the way is that he turned water into wine that's his very first recorded miracle so there's something significant there right um, do you notice that they were at a wedding celebration and so when the feast begins it's time for the feast well we don't have wine what are we gonna do well then that's when Yeshua instantly changes the water into the wine and there's gonna be a time where let's say that process of becoming a ripe piece of fruit let's say you're that piece of fruit and becoming ripe and that process seems to be taking a whole lot of time well you know what when it's time for the wedding feast in an instant you will be changed in the twinkling of an eye you will be changed you're going to become something different you're going to put on a spiritually glorified body of oikaterion in greek which means you're going to become immortal your spirit your soul your body your heart your mind your flesh all these aspects of you these six aspects of you man is the what six is the number of man so these six aspects of you are going to put on the number seven you're going to put on the number seven and that's when you put on your oikaterion and that's the number seven represents perfection and rest and completion you're going to be complete you're going to be perfect and you're going to rest in it no more struggle at all so going back to the bread they were to eat unleavened bread bread that was not forced to rise a bread that stays flat lays low well what did Yeshua do with the bread that stays flat and lays low he's the one that raises it up he's the one that picks it up raises it up and then what's he do he breaks it have you been risen in Christ and have you been broken yet broken that's okay I've been broken plenty of times and I'll probably keep on getting broken again just like that Brad you break it you pass it on break it pass it on break it and pass it on right but you know there was no time to force the bread to rise no time but what happens when they partake of this bread you know what happened when they partook of the bread it says that none of those people that exited out of G Egypt had any form of sickness on them there were a bunch of people exiting over half a million people and it, I mean over could have been up to a million but oh definitely over half a million people and um, not one of them had any sort of ailment scripture says not one of them they weren't weak they weren't frail they walked across the the, the 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 sea when it split they walked across that full of strength and vigor something about partaking of that bread the night before their departure 
there was healing in that bread. And when we can get the concept and understand when you are partaking of that bread that represents the body of Christ, what happens is you are declaring what has been done. And we know that bread represents his body, but what has been done for you in that bread? Well, he's not adding yeast, meaning he's not adding works to it. So you don't have to work your way to this healing. You don't have to work your way towards salvation. It's a gift. And when the pro and, and, and when the time comes for you to rise, for you to ascend, it will be Yeshua himself that does this for you. It'll be his power that causes you to rise or to ascend. Why? Because you are resting in him. You are trusting in his complete work, not yours. You're trusting in his. Beware of the leaven of your religious leaders. Beware of the leaven. Now, here's something that's powerful. I talk about the number 11 all the time. L-11. And, you know, Jesus says, be, you know, be cautious. Be aware of, of the leaven of those religious leaders. Beware of it, of their leaven, because their leaven says you got to work, you got to perform, you got to do something to get God on your side, to have God forgive you, to have God walk with you and you walk with Him. You got to perform, you got to obey, you have duties, you got to prove yourself, right? So that's their leaven. And that's the kind of leaven I grew up in as well, as a Jehovah's Witness for the first 30 years of my life. Well, in the number 11, or the word 11, you have L and you have even in there. L and even. Here's an interesting thing I was thinking about yesterday when I was reading my friend Christopher's book. When I read that sentence about only rising bread, which is amazing, I'm like, that is so cool. Not descending bread, rising bread. Listen, it's the work of God that's making you rise. And so when you hear me say the word 11, think about it like this, L, leaven. L is God, leaven, God's leaven. Be, be, what, what, okay, so we wanna avoid the leaven of your religious leaders, right? Who use scripture to back up all their points and all that. Right? So we want to avoid their leaven. But L leaven, L leaven, God leaven, what's his leaven? Do you know what his leaven is? Do you know what, makes, do you know what leaven he has that'll make you rise? Do you know what his leaven is? Love, yes, love is involved. But there's something else in there. It's his grace. His grace, which grabs hold of that love. His grace, which ha grabs hold of faith. His grace. It's always been about His grace. In Christ, it's always been about His grace. You got to be a believer in His grace, you guys. We have to believe in His grace and rest, which means to trust in His grace, right? His grace is going to raise you up. His grace is what's going to perfect you. It's good to train your mind. It's good to renew your mind. It's good to, 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 to change the way we think, which is repentance, by the way, metanoia, change the way you think, right? Changing the way you think, getting rid of old belief systems and getting some new beliefs in there, right? Some new ones, truth, because we had seeds of lies planted in us. So now we need these seeds of truth planted in us. So this is all good. This is all a process. You got to give yourself time. You got to be patient with yourself. Don't try to speed it up through, through religious performance because now you're partaking of the leaven of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, these religious people. 
that always want to push burdens on you. Today's religious leaders in every form, even the non-denominational ones. Now, when we start to understand this, and that in this bread, if he's the bread of life and we're in him, well, that makes us like bread, right? Some people might come across you and, and want some of your breadcrumbs, just like that lady that just wanted some breadcrumbs from Yeshua. Just give me some breadcrumbs. Just give me some breadcrumbs, because even the little doggies, they eat the breadcrumbs that fall from the master's table. Oh, great is your faith, woman. Great is your faith. Because you know crumbs are enough. You know breadcrumbs are enough. Oh my goodness, you understand things. You're not looking with, you're not looking through eyes of the physical realm. Because in the physical realm, breadcrumbs can't do nothing. But in the spiritual realm, bread comes can feed thousands and look at what yeshua did with the small amount of bread he broke it and fed thousands and thousands of people in this woman her faith was so great she could see that she didn't need whole loaves of bread she just needed breadcrumbs she saw that there was healing in this bread right because yeshua says this is the children's bread you don't give the children's bread to dogs do you and she says, but yes, even those little doggies, they eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Oh, that's so much wisdom. I wonder how she was imparted with that wisdom. I wonder what kind of spirit came over her and caused her to say those words to Yeshua. Perhaps it was a Holy Spirit, yes? So when you realize who you are in Christ, that when you partook of that tree of life, that fruit of life, you partook of him. You have his fullness in you now. You are now in the bread of life. That means you can drop some breadcrumbs everywhere you go. Right? As you receive, give and give freely share it with everyone everyone you can don't be shy you never know who you're coming across you never know if you're entertaining an angel you might misjudge somebody by looking at what they look like on the outside you have no idea what's going on in the inside Maybe we ought to try to smile once in a while a little bit more. Maybe when we cross paths with somebody, you just smile at them. If they think you're flirting with them, that's their problem. You just smile, right? Change lives. It'll do something for you in return as well. More happiness in giving than receiving. Watch what happens to you when you're giving somebody a smile once in a while. When you're doing some kind of friendly service. When you're picking up somebody, when you're building them up, them up, when you're reminding them of who they are, not who their friends say they are, not who their flesh says they are, not who their parents said they, who they are, not who their religious leaders say they are, not what society says they are, not what the uh, Democratic and Republican Party say they are. You pick them up and you remind them who they are in Christ. Right? But it's kind of difficult if you don't know who you are as well. So that's why you got to receive. And when you receive, you can give, can't you? Take and then give. And don't be afraid that you're going to run out because you'll become like a river that's flowing. There is no running out with a river, right? A pool can run out, but a river doesn't. It just keeps on flowing. And that's what we want to be, flowing rivers, right? Distri distributing this bread. And not bread with yeast in it. We want the unfermented bread. Because we want the, not the unfermented, we want the unleavened bread. Why? Because we don't force people to hurry it up. Get your act together. Hurry up. There's not much time. Armageddon's coming. End of the world's coming. You want to go to hell? You want, no. There's, there's people that still preach like that today, and some people just think that that's the kind of stuff they need. 
They desire that kind of preaching. But guess what? It might scare them into obedience for a while. Maybe it'll scare them into obedience for a while because now they're afraid. If they disobey, they're going to lose their life. Right? God's going to kill them. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people, they just they just think it's better that I'm, I'm still in this religious movement because uh, it's making me a moral person. I behave so much better when I'm part of this stuff. You know what? Like people that are in Jehovah's Witnesses that I know, that's still there. You can share the truth with them over and over again, but they still want to stay in it. It doesn't matter because this really, it's keeping them in line. It's making them save money. They don't spend money on gifts for people when it comes to Christmas and birthdays. It's just ridiculous. But people, they choose to live that way. I want to be a, a son of God that's free, right? The sons are free. They don't have to be under those religious burdens. You're free. other things about bread just a couple other do you remember the manna do you remember when the children of Israel were served manna manna was something that you were supposed to keep afresh every day partake of fresh manna don't save yesterday's manna and then eat it the next day because yesterday's manna which was delicious and all that well the very next day what happens if you store it overnight it goes bad really fast you can't eat it it'll get you sick why was this heavenly bread yesterday but today it's not well because the one who made that bread and sent that bread says listen I know what this bread is but you got to eat it fresh every day. Now, if you represent, because Christ is that heavenly manna, and if you're in him, now you're part of that heavenly manna, so you're one with him. So now you're that bread from heaven, right? The angel's food. And, um, and when you dwell on yesterday, with yourself, whether it was the great stuff you did yesterday and you just want to repeat that life again today, or whether it was your failures from yesterday and you're hoping not to repeat those mistakes from yesterday. Listen, be fresh manna every day. Don't dwell on yesterday. Don't try to repeat the same day again. It's a new day, fresh manna. Take with it and do the best with it you can each and every day. So you got to forgive yourself and you got to move on and don't stay trapped in yesterday. And, and listen, when I say forgive yourself, that also means don't be, don't be boasting in yourself either. Man, yesterday I did so great. I did so great. I want to do that again. I got to repeat that day again because if you don't repeat it, exactly like you did the day before, then you might start going into self-condemnation because you didn't measure up. <laughs> no, just stay humble. That's what it means to stay low. Stay humble. Stay humble. But the Bible says I'm the head, not the tail. See, you're looking at things in a physical way. You're trying to say you're the head, not your, I'm not the butt, I'm my head. I'm not my butt, I'm my head. No, you're, you're thinking of it in a physical way. The head, not the tail, means you're above the problems. Um, you're not below them, right? You're above it because you're in Christ. You're not below it. Um, so flat bread, flat bread. But if you see a piece of bread that's raised because it had leaven in it, had yeast in it, you would physically think, well, that's the br that bread has ascended and the flat bread hasn't. No, the, the bread that's ascended is the bread that's puffed up. It got puffed up, right? Don't people get puffed up because of their goody goodiness? The good, great stuff that they accomplish and do? That's bread that's puffed up. But when you stay flat and low and unleavened, guess what? 
he'll raise you up. But he won't raise you up by puffing you up. What he'll do is he'll pick you up and say, oh, how great this bread is. And there will be an amazing story behind that piece of bread. That bread will be elevated just like that young boy who had those five little small loaves of bread and the two little small pieces of fish, fishes. Well, these things were written in scripture. It's not the size of the bread, but guess what? We all hear about it and it is elevated because of our tip talking about it and speaking glory over this moment that Yeshua performed, right? We exalt over that bread. And that's when ex Yeshua exalts over you because you stayed low, you stayed humble. You understand these things? All right, guys, I love you all. Thanks for watching. God bless you all. I hope that you get my friend's book. I have not read the whole thing, so don't be like, hey, you recommended this book and it had this ending. Hey, I don't know, but I just know one thing. So far, it's pretty cool. And that, that sentence I read, that just, that changed, it changed so, it made me think, and I'm still gonna be thinking about this bread thing. We'll talk more, we'll get a little deeper eventually. But anyway, I just wanted to launch this off for you to just kind of start getting you to think about things in scripture and why things are in scripture. Just like, wait till the day I explain to you why these people um, ripped their garments, you know, with that word, alas. Alas is like, woe is me, and they rip their outer garments. What does that mean? What does that represent? I can't wait to share that with you guys someday. But anyway, I wanted to share this about his, our, uh, the bread because um, Christopher, he really inspired me with that and it got me thinking a lot yesterday and there's probably more we could talk about to, you know, right now, but I'm gonna cut the video short. So I love you guys. I hope you all have a great day. I hope this message has blessed you and I'll see you all next time.